top secret, undisclosed location. It's where this show was originally intended to emanate. Unfortunately, that off-the-grid location can no longer be found due to unforeseen issues. With the whole undisclosed part, instead we proudly bring you the Paranormal Power Twins, the Keepers of the Secrets, the Looters of the Lunacy, the Wranglers of the Weird, the Ministers of the Macabre, the Secrets of the Spirits, the- John. Hold, hold on, I'm almost- John, honey, it's time. Welcome to the Paranormal Sideshow with your host, John and Stacey Edwards of ParanormalSideshow.com. Hello and welcome to the Paranormal Sideshow. I'm your host, John Edwards, and joined as always by my lovely wife, Stacey. Hello. And we have a fun show for you today. We do. We're going to have Mike Sears on. Mm -hmm. Mike is a uh, guest that we had on the Haunted South back in 2011. Yes, long time ago. Uh, long time ago. Yes. I'm surprised I even remembered it was 2011. <laughs> About a year into the Haunted, Haunted South, we we brought Mike on. Mm -hmm. Mike uh, is the director for Volunteer State Paranormal Research. Right. Which I'm a fan of right off the bat because it's Tennessee. Exactly. I am born, you know, yes. in Tennessee. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm a product of that beautiful state. <laughs> anyway, Mike uh, has some very interesting and very unique experiences. Yes. Great stories. He, great stories. And, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to get him on here and talk about it because really being um, Air Force uh, you know, retired Air Force, uh, military man. Mm -hmm. He's he's definitely got that attention to detail. Yes. I guess that's the best way to put it. Yes. And so his paranormal research that he's done, mm -hmm. a lot of it, you know, has occurred in his home. He's had a lot of things over the years. And the, the unique thing about it, and I don't know if he intended to do this, we'll ask him about it, mm -hmm. but it's all been chronicled on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, he just happens to put pretty much most of the experiences. I would hate to think there was much more than that. Really, onto Facebook, on you know, and into social uh, blogs and 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 what have you. Right. The really cool thing about that for me mm -hmm. is when you go back and look at it as a body of work. Right. You know, you see all kinds of things that have happened, and it's mm -hmm. kind of fun to play along at home. <laughs> well, know? I know he was doing that in 2011. Yeah. When we had him on too, Absolutely. so it's been. Even that much longer. Yeah, nonstop. Yeah, nonstop crazy. stuff. I mean, I, you know, the attention to detail. I mm -hmm. love that. From I almost said I love military guys. Sorry, <laughs> this I like my military men. I like to hang out at the bar right beside the base on a Friday night. Uh, giving away our secrets. It's so nice. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do for kicks, guys. <laughs> ParanormalSideShow.com. That's your address to go find out where to pick up military men. On Facebook.com slash Paranormal Sideshow. That's where you go and find everything you could find if you just weren't lazy and went to ParanormalSideshow.com. <laughs> All Stacy's little stories and everything. On Twitter, it's at Sideshow97 because we're awesome and cool and come up with things like Sideshow 97 <laughs> on Instagram. Ah, oh, damn. It's John and Stacey Edwards. Mm -hmm. And on the YouTube kiddos, it's search Paranormal Sideshow. Don't type in search Paranormal Sideshow. We're asking you to search <laughs> Paranormal Sideshow. <laughs> and that might that may seem funny to some of you, mm -hmm. but... Some people need the directions. Some people need the directions. It, it would be those people that need for their shampoo to say, do not eat. Yeah, Those are the exactly, people we're talking to. Exactly. <laughs> Not, for no orifice. Um, yeah, you know, ooh. so I do research. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if you knew that or not. I, I was aware. Okay. So, I, I thought maybe. So I do a little bit of research mm -hmm. um, all over the place, right? Right. And um, <laughs> sometimes I listen to podcasts. Yeah, we're actually big podcast listeners. Yeah. Every now and then I'll, mm -hmm. I'll listen to podcasts and I'll read blogs and things like that. When I listen to podcasts, I like to listen to stuff that is pertaining to something I'm interested in. Right. So I'm not going to give too much away about this because, you know, the one thing that the rule we followed for the last seven years, mm -hmm. seven years of doing a podcast, we have one golden rule. Right. We don't make fun of people directly. Right. <laughs> right. So. Right. I, I may make fun of a country or I make I, I may. Well, that's all in fun, though. We're not yeah. really making fun of them. But no, as far no. as other people in the paranormal, you know, everybody has their own ideas and their ways of doing things. So right. we just laugh along with it. Yes. And sometimes, you know, we may laugh at Kentucky because anytime there's a UFO reported or some strange or anomaly or fireball in the sky, <laughs> it's always like Bangladesh, China, Taiwan and Kentucky all <laughs> spotted the autumn. You know, um, Kentucky has to be included. I don't 
don't know why. But they, you know what? They probably did see. I know what I saw. <laughs> I know it came right over the trailer. We were watching Housewives, and it just shook the whole place. But yeah, you know, I could say that because I'm from Southwest Virginia via Tennessee. Is that how they say it? I think so. Like where you're from? Yeah, I think so. So back to my story. Mm -hmm. The reason that I feel like I must tell you not to type in search. I was listening to this podcast, Mm -hmm. and I know we're not the most polished and beautiful and we're pretty raw, man. I mean, we yeah. were. We, I mean, we're not like the most professional podcast no, in no, the world. No, we, we by far. <laughs> we pretty much record it like it is, you know. Mm-hmm. The, the, the only reason we record it is just for your listening pleasure, not ours. I mean, we, <laughs> we want to make sure that if there's any burps, farts, accusations, or if my stomach growls, allegations, because that happens a lot. Yeah, anything like that <laughs> that that we can actually edit that out. So. <laughs> I was listening to this podcast and I was actually kind of excited because it was going to be talking about a piece of equipment that I was interested in. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I found the creator of this device and I was like, okay, cool. Here's a podcast with him. And let's just say for, you know, craps and giggles that it was um, paranormal pioneer podcast. Okay. Okay? That is not the real name. He's making that up. (laughs) So it comes on and there's of course the obligatory minute and a half of music for no reason. Right. Right. So as the music's playing, all of a sudden this guy comes on and he sounds like the <laughs> the adult education teacher for Lisp, you know, <laughs> like he, he comes on there and he's just like <laughs> paranormal pioneer radio. And he's very, oh, he's almost angry. Right. You know, that, that probably wasn't the best impersonation. It's more like paranormal pioneer radio. <laughs> the best paranormal pioneers of the pioneers and the paranormal. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I'm okay with that, right? Right. We, we do some pretty funny intros ourselves. Right. And so I think the guy's kind of joking. You forgot about the presented by part. No, no, I'm getting there. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm okay with any of that. I'm used to it. Well, I've, we listen to enough of these things. We're used to it, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's more about the content. It, it doesn't have to be the presentation. I I look at it as today's shortwave radio. Right. We're just communicating with each other. Mm-hmm. So it continues on, and, and and let me just go ahead and say that this show is only an hour the one I'm listening to. <laughs> so about two minutes in, they've changed the music up, and I'm like, well, here it comes, and it's like paranormal pioneer <laughs> radio presents. Paranormal Pioneer Radio with your host, the best host, the best show of the best host in the paranormal, <laughs> presenting Pioneer Paranormal. It went on like that forever. I, I honestly thought it was some weird time loop. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I wasn't sure what was going on. Well, I was sitting there and I wasn't looking at you. I was doing my own research. And after about three or four minutes, I turned around and this is no lie. John was rocking back and forth on the bed, <laughs> <laughs> just just going, when's it going to start? I don't understand. When's it going to start? I think he even listed out all the topics that he talks about, too. Yeah. And the, the, great, the great thing was, yeah, he, he starts talking about it and he gets the names wrong. He's like, oh, yeah. he's like, he's like, Paranormal Pioneer Radio presents Paranormal Pioneer Radio, <laughs> where we talk about the top uh, topics in toptology. <laughs> and we also have Paranormal Parahoya and Crypto Bigfoots. <laughs> and <laughs> who is this? I, I really think he, I, I think he honestly said Crypto Monsters or it, something it, silly. Yeah, it, it was, uh, which Crypto Monsters I wouldn't, wouldn't bother me as bad as some of the other things that were on there. Oh, it was it, great. It, it was, it was, it was. It did eventually start. It did. And it then he did. hung up on his guest. <laughs> did he? Yeah. That was the first thing that happened. <laughs> so I'm listening, waiting for this guy. And right. he's, he's like, Mike, Mike, are you there? <laughs> and there's nothing. He's like, Mike, Mike, are you there? <laughs> and there's nothing. And then, and then here's Mike. And he's like, oh, uh, hey, um, how you doing? And he's like, I, uh, this is kind of weird, but you hung up on me. (laughs) And, you know, at that moment, sometimes I cringe when we go back and listen to the old Haunted South episodes Mm -hmm. just because we're going, you know, um, um, and it it was live. It was, it was live then. So we didn't have an opportunity to polish it at all. No, not at all. Uh, you can have all the opportunities you want to polish it now though. Yes. Oh, this. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I I think I get that. So anyway, um, yeah. 
I just ummed on that one. But, it, you know, it was live. There's only so much you can do with live. So I'm forgiving to this guy on that. The only funny part to this was that God forsaken intro. Oh, gosh. I believe that I'm that is my new favorite show. <laughs> so it, it it's kind of crazy that something so annoying can mm-hmm. just be so intriguing and so uh, endearing. Right. It's, it's, it's the reason why you like it. I think we should create a mystery science theater for paranormal podcasts <laughs> where, where it's just us sitting around on YouTube uh-huh. listening to a paranormal podcast and just ripping it apart. Oh, I feel like we would hurt feelings. We could do our own. We could, just, we, we could do our own. Yeah. We could pretend <laughs> to be somebody else and sit there and make fun of ours. That way there you wouldn't you have to worry about it. No, I mean, it's all good. And like I said, this is, this is all research that it's the only way we're getting this information out. Right. Main- well, did it end up being interesting anyway? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. absolutely. Well, good. <laughs> absolutely. Well, mainstream media is not going to cover what we cover. You know, you're just not going to have it happen. Um, right. Local news media is only going to cover you on Halloween or mm-hmm. uh, with X-Files music, as we've talked about before. So the only real way to do this is to interact in our communities. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and the best way right now is by podcasting, as far as really listening to ideas. You can read but in the in in the reading of, of blogs and stuff, you're not going to get the full, you know, stories from people like you'll get on a uh, podcast or radio show. Right. Well, you're not going to hear people talk about it like when they have a passion for something. Right. You want to hear them talk about that. Absolute. The reason mm-hmm. that we started this, the reason I started this in 2010, uh, was just because, and I'd been wanting to do it for a a, a year. Mm-hmm. It was the only thing on my mind. Yeah. I just I remember. knew I wanted to do this, mm-hmm. and it was just simply to bring in everything. I mm-hmm. wanted to talk about, and you know what's kind of funny? John Tenney mm-hmm. had a blog recently. Right. And you need to link to that for me. Okay. Because it, it was just a short page, uh, long thing, but I believe it was on Weird Lectures. Mm-hmm. And I absolutely loved it because it's what I've talked about for so long. And, and of course, he's talked about it for way longer. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, everything, you know, we're, he talked about back in the 80s or 90s. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to date John Tenney. Um, the, Are you not? Well, maybe. I think he's single. <laughs> so back in the in the early 2000s, in the 90s, uh, going to these you know paranormal cons or whatever mm-hmm. uh, before they were paranormal cons, uh, social gatherings of weird people. Everything was together. Right. You know, it, it, people shared ideas, and uh, there was a little bit of animosity between the fields. Right, but right. you still shared ideas and, and and really tried to further along, and it was it was almost a. And I've said this before about these things. It's almost like a support group. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you've had an alien encounter, right, you need to talk to other people you, that have had alien encounters. You absolutely do. Yeah, absolutely. If you've had a severe haunting, mm-hmm. no one's going to believe you. Right, we know that firsthand. Yeah. So they're going to act like they believe you. Yeah, they're going until you leave the room. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's easier just not even talk about it, right? Mm-hmm. So that that it's like a support group, and um, anyway, I, I I love the podcasting community and all, all fun with you guys. This is uh, all in jest. <laughs> so anyway, with that said, speaking of jest, it's now time for the paranormal news. All right, so let's get to the news. Let's. Okay, so the first story is about the teacher, the kindergarten teacher that is under investigation now because she pulled the Ouija board out in her kindergarten class. Oh, my God, yes. Yes, and this happened in Milwaukee. Of Um, course it did. (laughs) And it was back, uh, it was on February 24th. And what happened was a mother complained to the school because her son came home and was scared he didn't want to be alone in his room and he got scared when he wanted to go to sleep and found out that the teacher had pulled a Ouija board out and was using it with the kids not now not using it like she says she wasn't using it like you know to contact spirits or whatever right but she did have it out with the kids and was moving it around and talking about you know scary things right I mean, still. So, yeah, like, no. I, I don't even know why it was in the room. No, absolutely so, not, man. The mom, she said that they shut off the lights to make it dark and that um, 
that they were talking to spirits is what the mother said. But the teacher, when she emailed the mother uh, in response, she said that the kids had been asking for a scary story, um, which, by the way, just because a five-year-old asks for a scary story doesn't mean you tell them a scary story. No. You would think a teacher I mean, would know better than that. You tell them a joke. Yeah. So she got the board down, which she said had been in her classroom since Halloween. I suppose it was a Halloween decoration in a kindergarten room. Wow. I don't understand that at all. And she just began moving around the little thing to answer some of the questions. Like, she moved it. Mm. But I, I'm pretty sure that the kids thought that it was real. I mean, they're five. Right. You know? Mm. And she said that they asked about scary characters in movies. And she said that she never said that there were spirits and that it was just all done in fun. And that she, you know, she thought it was silly and she was sorry and she would take it, the board home and never do it again. But the damage has already been done. Absolutely. And we don't know what kind of damage has been done. Right. You know, the, the very fact of the matter is it's real. Yeah, and exactly. It's a it's a complete open communication form for mm-hmm. spirits to come in. It's basically saying, um, hey, you know, we, we, we would like you to possess us, please. Um, exactly. Unless it's not, you know, unless it's done correctly, controlled circumstances, whatever. And that's right. still kind of iffy. Well, you know, I and I want to put in here because I know there's this huge debate about Ouija boards and, you know, whether they're dangerous or not. And some people are just like, oh, I'll never have a Ouija board in my house and this and that. And, you know, I don't the Ouija board itself is not the dangerous thing. I mean, if you went to the store right now and bought a Ouija board, it would be cardboard and plastic and it would do nothing. It's when you use it wrong or you don't understand what you're doing or you think it's a game and you don't believe what you're doing. Well, that, that's where you get the danger. You're opening up when you use it. Right. You are opening up the door mm-hmm. to say, I want to communicate with the other side. Exactly. So I think you can do that with anything to your point. I think that's the point you're making. Right. Um, EVP recorder. Exactly. You know, anything exactly. you can... It can be a conduit to the other side. Right. It's the power that you give it. Exactly. And it's your intention when you're using it. So, you know, I don't think that just having the Ouija board in there was was dangerous, but because she took it down and used it and made it look like a game, that made it I will give bad. It, I will give it this much to her mm-hmm. defense. Uh, right. If you're not in the paranormal, mm-hmm. you think it's something from Milton Bradley. Right. That is not dangerous. Exactly. And you know that it's associated with horror movies and things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. There's no bad monsters on the board. There's no um, graphic violence on the board. Right. It just has letters. I mean, you could take a piece of paper and make a communication device with it. Right. And it would be the same thing. Um, the only time I would say that you could get a Ouija board that was dangerous was if you bought an old one. Yeah. That maybe someone had used improperly right. and it had something attached to it. Now, that that I would understand. Right. Yeah. So. And I mean... But at the same time, you would think that, you know, being a college educated person that you would have a sense to you to not possibly step on any boundaries. I mean, look what we have to be careful about. We can't Mm -hmm. talk about a certain religion. We can't Mm -hmm. we can't bring God into school. Exactly. Um, So if you you know, if you're not bringing that into school, then maybe the parents might get upset (laughs) about bringing, you know, Beelzebub. Uh, I feel like you probably don't even need a college education to know that you don't tell a five year old a scary story. Yeah. I mean, you would think that would be common sense. You you know, don't eat the shampoo. Yeah, exactly. I mean, come on. Exactly. (laughs) Paranormal Pioneer Radio. (laughs) Well, she is, uh, the Milwaukee Public School System has put her on administrative leave pending the outcome of an internal investigation. So, but I mean, the teacher already admitted that she did it. So I don't know what they're investigating. Yeah. Exactly. I, I don't know. So I don't know. But, um, Maybe yeah. all the teachers like got in there at night <laughs> and they all, you know, had these sessions together and they decided they were going to give the demons the souls of the children. <laughs> Boy, you just made that dark really quickly. Well, I'm just saying if it was a Buffy episode. Got to look at all the angles, don't you? You do. Don't you? Well, uh, I would be outraged if that were my child. Oh, yeah. So. There would be dead people. There would be dead teacher. Yeah. Yes. You'd okay. be communicating with her through a Ouija board. I know you. <laughs> I've seen you pissed off at a school before. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's terrible. Okay. So let's move on. All right. So this next story is actually kind of an update. And we talked about this. This is a story about BioQuark, which is, I know, a weird name. They are a biotech company based in the United States. And we talked about this on the third side, on episode 30, like in April of last year. And what BioQuark's trying to do is reanimate people that are brain dead. Mm. Do you remember this story? Yeah. I, I remember we talked about it. And at the time when we talked about it last year, they were just introducing the idea of what they wanted to do. And they were getting ethical approval, like, you know, making yeah, using, sure. Using stem cells. 
Yes, exactly. Yeah, I remember it. So there's a story now saying that they have now gotten the go-ahead to begin doing research on 20 brain-dead patients. Mm. So they're not... Any of our family members? <laughs> no. They're uh, not at the point where they can actually reanimate. This is just the early stages. It's not been tested yet. So they're, are they not? They're trying to stimulate and regrow the neurons. That's are their they? first... That, that's what they say their first... Uh, step is so i'm just guessing mm-hmm. that section 37 in the basement <laughs> yeah, something like has that. you know patient zero i'm sure frank i'm sure but their hopes are still to use stem cells to reboot the brain jump start <sighs> the neural activity and bring people that have our brain dead back to life essentially bringing them back from the can dead. i ask you some questions sure do we have a population crisis I believe we do. Just a little bit. Do we have mm-hmm. places on, on earth right now where people can't get water and can't get food? Yep, I, I agree. Mean, we're already living longer. Mm-hmm. And trust me, as the older I get, the more I'm all for that. Right. <laughs> my, my opinion has changed quite a bit in the last 20 years. Exactly. But I don't think, look, I, I, I don't want to get any too, too far off on something. Mm-hmm. But when it's your time, it's your time. Right. Um, everything happens for a reason. Exactly. Don't play around with things you're not supposed to play around with. I agree with you on this. This one. is pretty much to me. Don't mm-hmm. feed. Don't feed the flipping mogwai after midnight. <laughs> well, you know, I and I'm all for stem cell research because they can do amazing things with they it. They can to people that are still alive. Yes. But I think once you've passed, I mean, I don't. So know how if- did we get to trying to fix someone's vertebrae? To reanimating their brain. I don't know. And now I don't know if there's a time limit. Like, I don't know if it's one of those things where people pass away and they immediately try to re or, but they obviously. It would are, have to be. Yeah. I like, mean, I mean, how, how far it'd gone? Be too much decay. Right. But I mean, I don't mean like months, but I mean, oh. how many hours you can go before this would work. I, you know, I, I'm not a doctor. Right. I know that's shocking, mm-hmm. but I really think that we instantly start you know, mm-hmm. things instantly start getting damaged, right? It, it, it isn't when you die mm-hmm. and you're an organ donor. Mm-hmm. It's very timely. It is. It's time sensitive. And I know that, that they can keep brain dead people alive, but but then there's that question of when does your soul leave your body? Yeah. You know? Right. And what happens then? So maybe this is coma patients. Is, would that be considered brain dead? Uh, maybe. It doesn't really go into detail about no, who the, they're the coma patients on. are completely, their brains are the only thing that are alive. I'm not sure. It just doesn't sound like a good idea, but I'm going to put a link up to the story and there's actually uh, a website that I linked to before. I'll link to it again where you can actually go to BioQuark's like website and it'll tell you all about it. When I was a kid, Mm -hmm. I absolutely love zombie movies. I was the only kid who liked zombie movies. Right. Everybody else liked slasher flicks Mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Right. Um, Some people liked vampires. Mm-hmm. Um, some people liked werewolf movies. Most of the people liked werewolf movies when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. That was the big deal. Right. Uh, Silver Bullet, stuff like that, you know. But I like zombie movies. Mm-hmm. And, you know, specifically, I liked independent, foreign I remember <laughs> zombie that. Movies. I remember even when we met, you were like, you had to school me in zombie movies. Yeah, I love zombie movies, yes. right? And nobody, nobody um, that I knew mm-hmm. liked them. So years go by and the zombie craze starts. Right. Right. And everybody loves zombies to the extent that I can't stand zombie things anymore. No. Like if it's zombie a go go, mm-hmm. I'm just you know what I mean. It's like I'm pretty sure you showed me some like obscure foreign zombie movies. Oh, like yeah. we had to buy a special DVD player. <laughs> yeah, just to play the <laughs> to other regions. play the other region DVDs. And I mean, I've seen some really crazy stuff. Hey, there's some really good ones. There are Cemetery I love, Man. I love foreign movies. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, yeah that's a that's great, great movie. Anyway, so. <laughs> Back on topic here. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, the, when it when everybody got into it, I really got out of it. Mm-hmm. And then it started bothering me mm-hmm. that everybody wanted a zombie apocalypse to happen. Because I'm right. thinking, do you? I mean... <laughs> it sounds cool, but really, do I'm, you? I mean, do you? Because since I've been alive, I've seen all of us know how to make a fire in the woods and, you know, go hunting to none of us being able to do anything but potato ourselves, watch television, and play on our phone. Oh, yeah. If the power were to go out. Forever. Forever. No internet. We would instantly lose 85% of the population off stupidity alone. I agree. 
And the ones that survived that decided, hey, I bet all these guys are going to loot and burn each other alive. You know, and, and the smart ones, would we would hide in a cave for a year, mm-hmm. let them all kill with each our, other off. With our stash, yeah. our preparedness stash. <laughs> I mean, do you really want this to happen? No, you don't want this to happen. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, the zombie stuff, It did, but it seems like since the zombie craze happened, and this is my point, right? that more and more they keep screwing with things. That could potentially yeah cause the zombie apocalypse create to happen. a zombie apocalypse. Oh, it's gonna happen. Any, I mean, either that or monkey's gonna take over the world. I well, mean, one of the two things. It is gonna just happen. reminds me of you know like a topa, like like almost like they're putting so much energy into that wish, right? That it's actually becoming possible. Because the one of the reasons I loved it when I was a child mm-hmm. was the only zombie I'd ever seen was like the in search of um, obscure african tribe that brought somebody back from the dead Mm -hmm. and they walk around they're not really dangerous they're not biting your forehead right it's totally different kind of zombie. total different kind of voodoo zombie exactly you know i like that uh so it's just weird how you could put so much (laughs) energy and thought into something well it's funny you brought that up i'm going to jump ahead to this other news story that i have that i was going to do later but i'll go ahead and do it now because it's about zombies Okay. Okay. So it's about the one in Indiana where the radio station got hacked. Oh, yeah. And uh, there was emergency radio alerts of a zombie attack that was broadcasted (laughs) in Indiana. War of the Worlds, Indiana. (laughs) Exactly. It says the broadcasts, which were replayed frequently on a Winchester station uh, around noon on Wednesday, uh, they warned that there was flesh-eating attack as well as a related disease outbreak from dead bodies. Mm. And the Randolph County Sheriff's Department actually had a post on their Facebook that it was not a real thing because people were calling (laughs) and that somebody had hacked the radio station and was playing these. And they made it sound like they used the emergency alert sound. Oh, wow. Um, One person did say that um, that they didn't have a very professional radio voice, so they they questioned it. Really? So yeah. So if you're gonna hack a radio station, get you know make it sound professional. Pioneer paranormal. <laughs> There's a zombie attack, and it's the best zombie attack that's ever been in the pioneer and the paranormal zombies. Right. So they um, I don't think they've caught who did it, but somebody with a sense <laughs> of humor, I suppose it was. Well, you know what are they gonna do to them? I know. I don't know. It was on station WZZY ninety eight point three. Hmm. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, But on a side note, you know, the CDC actually has a zombie preparedness page. They put it up a few years ago. And it's all about uh, what what to do in the event of a zombie apocalypse. And it's basically just being prepared for an emergency, any kind of emergency. But they make it zombie themed. So that because pe- that seems to be what people look at. Yeah, they did it for fun. Yeah, and but they've kept it that way because it right. worked so well. Right. But you can go there and they actually even have a graphic novel that you can read that has a checklist at the end. That's really cool. Yeah, it's actually, but you can download they it. They should for have free. had Robert Kirkman do it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I looked at it a little bit. It, it's pretty interesting, but it's not that. It's funny because it's like the government's all helping and everybody's all, you know, in the gym and. You know, the police are all... The government's helping. Yeah, and they're like... Round all, us into the FEMA And they camp. find a vaccine, right. you know, and all this stuff. So it's not really real life, but it's a it's a graphic novel. It's well, cool. I mean, what is real life? They could have like, <laughs> Coral, this is how you survive, Coral. Yeah. I mean, I suppose they're going to have kids reading it, so, you know. All right, anyway. So let's talk about a couple other weird things that Maybe happens. they can read it in Miss Johnson's class with the... Uh, Ouija board <laughs> and like, the candles and the today kids we're done with the Ouija board <laughs> but the magic circle we're going to talk about zombies <laughs> all right so let's just talk about a couple other just strange things that came around in the news this week this is my half of it all right so did you see the video about the turkeys I, I did and the I was I was turkeys. highly disturbed yes it was very strange and the only reason I say this is because where we lived in Virginia one of the houses we lived in Virginia there were wild turkeys all the time right and they there were was just, wild turkey all the time well yes there was but there were wild turkeys that walked through the yard right. and you know they just they never acted in any like group like no, no form they were just random and they'd wander there's they, a bunch of them they never congregated exactly so this video that the man took that lived in Massachusetts was a group of wild turkeys circling around a dead cat yeah and nobody knows why they were doing it yeah it's very very bizarre it's very crazy it was like if they had little robes <laughs> and, and you know some kind of weird gobble chant right it's like gobble gobble <laughs> gobble 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 <laughs> I don't know if they were trying to bring the cat back to life or if maybe the cat killed one of them. 
you uh, know maybe and then they're like hey you know what mother you know and <laughs> they come they come you back maybe have to use a beep there they kill i've learned <laughs> they kill the cat and that's they're making sure the cat can't get its ninth life back there you go you know well they did ask a wildlife biologist and he said he suspects because he doesn't know right. that the turkeys were just sizing up the threat of the cat i don't like they thought maybe it was a threat and they were okay. just they were worried but you know, they don't really know. So right. I thought that was pretty weird. And um, the other weird thing that went around was just everywhere, went completely everywhere, was the sh- the cloud, the shadow person cloud oh, yeah. over Zambia. And I didn't post the story. I you called that one right off the bat, though. Yeah, I didn't even pick this one up. But I did post on our Facebook. You can go to our Facebook and look. Um, that showing how that's obviously a hoax. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a picture you can find on the Internet very easily of a kite it's like called a spirit man kite or something like that it's a kite special kite that this company makes and the funny thing is is there's a picture of that kite and i posted it and it's exactly like the picture of the cloud over the mall i mean even the clouds are the same right so somebody they didn't put just, a lot of work into yeah it. like they didn't try really hard right so it's it was an obvious hoax but i wanted to mention it because it did go to a lot of different websites people that just pick pick up stuff without right. really you know being able to look into it or whatever but so that was one of those new nice hoax thingies what we should do to people that hoax things draw and quarter them with (laughs) shetland ponies all right so let's move on to an actual story let's do it okay so this is a story that we actually put up on the website about a man named paul howard and he found some pictures uh that were hidden in his grandfather's house and barn after his grandfather passed away. Mm -hmm. And these are pictures that supposedly show uh, Bigfoot. Right. And the pictures are interesting. There's seven of them in total. And he has a YouTube channel. Now, he's not a paranormal YouTube person. He's a pest control expert. Right. And his videos generally deal with how to get rid of wasps and things like that. Right. But his grandfather passed away recently. And he found, he started finding these pictures. He was going through the house. And he found two buried in the barn. Mm. And so he's got them all. He finally did this one final video where he put all seven photos, and you can go through them. Now they're grainy, right? And they're of blurry they are. because they're Bigfoot pictures. But there are a couple that are closer up that are are interesting. Um, and he did say that his grandfather was a very serious person. He didn't think that he ever believed in Bigfoot. He never said anything about the photos. He never showed them to anybody. He right. just had them and hid them. You know, right. He was like he was like the mailman. He was the local mailman. His grandfather was. Everybody respected him, and so it wasn't like something that he thought his grandfather would hoax. Right? You know? No, I get you. I mean, so, he obviously didn't hoax it. He didn't no, ever do he anything didn't with show it. Show him to anybody. So he's put them in this video, and we actually put this on paranormalsideshow.com. So if you go there, um, I've actually put the video there. You can watch the video and see the pictures and decide, you know, for yourself what you think. It does look like a giant Bigfoot type thing, long right. arms. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what to think about it. No, no. I mean, and, and that's the whole thing. We we never really, we leave it up to you. Yes, I mean, it's, exactly. This is the best way to do it. We're just reporting what we see and what we find, <laughs> and uh, the rest is up to you guys. Yes. All right, so let's move on. Uh, let's mention this story about Tom DeLong. Oh, yeah. The Blink-182 guy. Um, you know, he's really into UFOs now. He is. And that kind of thing. So recently at the 2017 International UFO Congress, they actually, um, openminds.tv, uh-huh. you know, the website, they actually gave him the 2017 UFO Researcher of he's the kinda, Year Award. He's kind of taken on the uh, mantle of the spokesman he for, has. for the whole community. And he made a speech there, and he made it a point to say that, you know, he says, I'm just like you guys. I read the same books. I watch the same videos. You know, I, I think the same things about all this he said but maybe he said did did i use my notoriety a little bit to help me get my message out he said yes i did but you know well good for him he feels like it was important for him to do that and And they they attack him all the time they do and he feels like he actually did make some progress yeah he has and Mm -hmm. you know it's nice to see him get a little respect here because he's been attacked and 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 slandered for years you know for his beliefs right right so it's very brave so he and he's he's doing a lot of things there's like i'll link to this article there's like things that he's working on where he's still trying to move that forward and right. trying to get disclosure and stuff like that. And so Blink-182 still rocks. <laughs> well, we think so anyway. Big fans. Uh, yes. All right. So let's talk about, this is a cool story that I found. Um, 
that I hadn't heard about until recently. And it was about, it's about this display in Greece. And they're displaying this 7,000 year old archaeological enigma is what they're oh. calling it. So the, that was national, the name on my first band, <laughs> the national archaeological museum in Athens has this, uh, collection this display going on called unseen museum display and so they bring it's out really hard to find yeah exactly <laughs> what it is it's a temporary exhibition where they bring out antiquities that are normally kept in the storerooms right things that are not permanently on display and so there was a like giants no i don't think they have any giants oh. i don't i couldn't really find any i mean that's a land of them too yeah you know there's supposedly been a lot True. of giant bones found well there. it says there's some two hundred thousand uh, antiquities but i couldn't find like when i tried to find out about it it was hard to get on their their website like yeah. it didn't really work because it's greece but there is what, what are one, you saying about the infrastructure in greece no it's the way the website was set up that's not what i meant i'm sorry but oh, you know how the greeks are they had this statuette that they've displayed um greek archaeologists are calling it a seven thousand year old enigma because it it's like a bird-like object but it's carved from granite but it's so old that there's no way they could have had the benefit of metal tools. So they don't really know how they've made it. Well, I have a, I have a, I have a theory. <laughs> Do you? Well, number one, they probably had metal tools. Probably. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, number two, it could have been helped by somebody else. It could have been. And they kind of call it like a bird-like object. It, it does have like a pointed nose, but then it's like a person sort of. Very common bird-like objects. Yes. In that time period. And it didn't. Ha it doesn't have a lot of detail, which they think is because they didn't have tools is what they're saying. But it's just cool that or it's Or it's the 7,000-year-old version of Bigfoot photos. <laughs> it could Maybe be. they used to see like the big Thunderbird going over it all the time. <laughs> and they're like, damn it, let's carve it. And every time they carve it, it's really like not, you know, nondescript and it right. makes everybody angry. <laughs> well, anyway, I Sorry. thought it was cool because my it's, mind is a strange place. It, it mystified the archaeologists. It was very old and they've actually put it on display now. I love that. It mystified the archaeologists. Yes, I love that saying. That's really cool. That's almost better than baffle scientist. <laughs> it's, it's kind of the same thing. Isn't we it? should make that our mission statement. To the baffle science. Baffle science. <laughs> Mystify <laughs> archaeologists. <laughs> That's great. That's good. All right. So let's talk about Zach Baggins. Let's. What has Zach Baggins done now? That could be a TV show. <laughs> I'm gonna find I'm gonna call the fine people in LA. Right. And tell them, you know what? Scratch the other idea. Let's let let's let's do a show called What's Zach Baggins Done This Time? <laughs> well, this time he has bought what people are claiming as the world's most haunted object, and that would be the Dybbuk box. The Dybbuk box <laughs> that inspired the movie. Right now. The Possession. If it wasn't for uh, infringement on copyrights, right. I would totally have John Winchester going, don't open the Dybbuk box! <laughs> That's all I could think about from The Possession. I know. The Possession is a great film based on the Dybbuk box, and yes. the only thing I, that I can ever remember is Mr. Negan himself going... Don't open the box. You know, <laughs> that's, that's like just, the only line you can remember. It's great. Yes. Well, he's. Can you imagine if Keanu Reeves had started in that? Oh, gosh. It would have been, don't open the box. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Harold will be on Reeves. It's, it's bad. It's really, dude, it's bad. <laughs> so anyway, so he's going to put it in his museum, his haunted artifacts museum, where mm -hmm. he has quite the collection already. And it, this article, uh, the article was on TMZ. It did claim that he was not going to display it open, which I was surprised. I figured he'd just be opening it and closing it. Right. You know, as much you know, he's opening. You know, the first thing he did when he got it was open it now, in his museum. Now, come on, he's he 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 practices uh, maybe safety. Maybe. I mean, he he does some crazy things, but he, uh, <laughs> I, you know, personally, I don't think I've ever seen him do anything like like that. I mean, oh no 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 no, he wouldn't have opened it. He would have sent Aaron in. Aaron, <laughs> go open that box for me real quick, buddy. Jay, Jay, could you open that box? Um, <laughs> but uh, no, actually, he's going to display it closed uh, for safety's sake. And I think he's actually going to make people sign a waiver and you have to be at least 18 to even view it because right. it's uh, it's dangerous. Yeah. I mean, well, he's been uh, talking about it. I've seen it on his on a Facebook mm -hmm. post and on, on some uh, Twitter feeds. Right. Uh, he's talking about how active it's been since he got... Um, the, oh, sure. the Dybbuk box mm -hmm. um, that it's actually, you know, he, he commented, he actually shared the TMZ article mm -hmm. and he quoted at the top of it mm -hmm. that things had been really messed up mm -hmm. in the museum since he got the Dybbuk box. Right. 
So uh, well, he's even tweeting about it as well. It, now, t- correct me if I'm wrong, but just because there's supposedly something in the box, it can still affect things around it, obviously. So if you have a room full of all these objects that have attachments or are haunted, it just sounds like a recipe for all kinds of activity. Yeah. To yeah. bring something so powerful in there. I mean, this goes back to uh, Ouija board. This goes back to the stem cell thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, why? Why, <laughs> why? Why do you even do it? Like this purportedly right. caused the deaths of people or it caused uh, terrible life events and it did and misfortune and you know i understand the curiosity if anybody does right but at the same time having pain people come in and i know it's at their own risk if they go in there it's their own yeah risk. well especially if you make some sign a waiver i will say that i feel like his heart's in the right place yeah. that he feels like he could i mean i feel better knowing that somebody that understands what it is has it than it just being passed down through family where they don't know what it is can i go back to john tenney for a second <laughs> sure so let's just say somebody gave it to John Tenney. Mm-hmm. I have a suspicion mm-hmm. that we would have never heard about that. Probably not. That it would be buried somewhere deep in Michigan. Probably. You know, I'm just saying. Once the ground unfreezes. And it all. depends on who gets it. You know, it, d- it depends on, on, on right. you know, the sensational well, the mean, sensationalism surrounding it. He he does own a museum. Zach does own a museum. And yeah. he, he does need to promote his business. And he did pay a lot of money for it. I mean, the Warrens have done this forever. Right, you right. Know, um, they've they've had all the all the haunted objects, and um, I don't know. I mean, I do believe that objects have possessions and 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 things like that, or or ghosts, or at least attached to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is, the Dybbuk box is different because it's there's religion and there's mm-hmm. um, you know this is we're actually talking demons here. Yeah, you know so. It's next level stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's you've turned on from a from beginner to maximum hard level. Yes, exactly. You know you need all the little health bottles you can get <laughs> to make your character make it through till the end. Right. And there's not always a restart, so that's well, the only thing that worries me. I'll be curious to see how that progresses. Like if it turns out, because I feel like it it could possibly get bad enough that he may have to put that away. Yeah, you never you know. You know, away from the other haunted things. Well, at least for us, it'll be a fun little research project to exactly. watch how it happens from afar. Exactly. Yes, from, from very far. <laughs> exactly. All right. So I have one more story. All right. Okay. So this last story is an interesting one. We've done stories like this before, but this is about a family who has moved into a new home. Mm-hmm. And when they were moving in, they discovered a body in the walls. Oh. Well, bones anyway. I don't know if there was any body. How did they discover it? Well, they were putting some things away in the attic and they noticed some loose floorboards. Oh, this sounds like the start of a movie. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And so they moved the boards and they discovered a pile of bones in the walls. So they called the police because, you know, there's somebody in the walls. Okay, wait. They moved the floorboards. Yeah, there was loose floorboards in the attic. And it made them discover bones in the wall. Yeah, like... They could look down into the wall. Oh, in the wall below them. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. I'm sorry. And so the investigators came and they had to punch a hole in the wall Mm -hmm. and remove the bones. So they had no idea who this was, but the neighbors uh, told the news station that the previous homeowner went missing two years before, Mm. a 61-year-old woman. So they don't know if it's her. How hard did they look for her? I don't know. I mean, you would think there would be somewhat of a pungent odor. <laughs> you would think so. I mean, but if nobody lived in the house, I mean, I don't. It didn't say how long the house had really been is Venezuelan wood oil. It is. It's like harkens back to that story. But a medical examiner. This is my favorite part of the article. Says a medical examiner is working to identify the remains and determine if there was any foul play. Yeah. Or she just absolutely tripped into the wall. Right. Or she just died naturally inside the wall right. of her own home. But it might not be her. Now, yeah. they, they, don't, they haven't identified the body yet. It may just be somebody completely different. Maybe 61-year-old got gone because maybe she, she hid someone in the wall. Maybe walls. she killed, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and then she took town. off. Yeah. <laughs> so you never know. But <clears throat> I feel bad for these new homeowners because what is the last thing you want to do when you're moving into a house? Find bones. Find a dead body in the walls. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Absolutely. I mean, oh, I bet we're going to be hearing about that place again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, granted, it's better than finding it when you're digging your new pool. It's better than finding a woman on the floor, too, staining your wood floors. Yes, it is. Unless you have many <laughs> other dead women to help stain the floor evenly. All right. Well, that is all of my news. Well, it was very good. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you.
honored guests, friends, and marks. We here at the Paranormal Sideshow would ask that those faint of heart or weak of the knees to please switch off this broadcast as it's time for the supernatural spectacle. A mystery wrapped inside of an enigma and stuffed neatly inside of a Tijuana taco roll. It's now time for our main attraction. All right, and it's now time for the main attraction. And as always, we try to bring you something cool and uh interesting interesting yes so this week is no exception to that i'm actually digging into the archives here and pulling (laughs) out one of my favorite guests from 2011 Mm -hmm. back when uh we were doing the haunted south deal yes we had we were live yeah (laughs) and i couldn't edit it (laughs) yeah when we were back when we were live (laughs) we had a, a guest mike sears he is the director of volunteer state paranormal and he, the, the, by the way, the website, as Stacy always wants to look at me and make sure I say, <laughs> is uh, vsparanormal.com. So, and you can also find find the Volunteer State Paranormal on, on Facebook, various blogs. Mike's been a, a, a guest on not only our show, but in, on other various shows. And mm-hmm. really, as I was talking about at the first of the show, my favorite thing about him is how his attention to detail. And I think a lot of that comes from being a military man. He's got a, a, a keen attention to detail with his experiences. And I love that. I follow, mm-hmm. I have, I follow it from afar. I, I guess I kind of troll him, don't I? A little bit. <laughs> We're going to creep bit. him out. And he's going to hang up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I absolutely love what he does. And uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of his research. And that's what this uh, field and that's what this show is about. Mike, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thanks for having me on the show again. Yeah, man. Great talking to you guys. Well, yeah, same here. I was going to tell you something funny. Um, I was talking to it a little bit before the show, but the last time we had Mike on, on the Haunted South, mm-hmm. we were talking about his first paranormal experience, or really, not really his first paranormal experience, but the the one that really got him into the field. Into the field, yeah. Because we always ask that question. We, that's always our question. Yeah. So as we were live... Now, right. this only happened two times during the history of that show. As we were live, he, he talked about a relatively good experience, mm-hmm. and he talked about sort of a terrifying experience. Right. And on the latter of the two, mm-hmm. the audio dropped out, even though it was fine in our studio. Yeah. The, yeah, because we didn't know that the audio, because we would have fixed it if right. we had known. The, the audio dropped out, and, right. I, and Mike didn't realize that until um, I, we were just talking before the show, mm-hmm. and, and I told him, so... Um, you know, I, I will, hopefully that this time the audio will be fine. <laughs> By the way, a little yes. trivia note, the only other time that happened was when I was talking about FEMA camps. That's right. We uh, got we actually got cut off. Yeah, we got cut there was off no, the air. There was no audio dropping. Wow. That was like yeah we we had gone. a cons- we had a conspiracy theorist on, and we were talking about FEMA camps. And as soon as I said FEMA camp, um, the live feed went off. The studio shut down. It had never happened before. It was actually <laughs> a television studio that we recorded at. Yeah. And that we could not get it back on. So there you go, Mike. I know you like that stuff like I do. So, so if if you don't mind, um, what was the experience that that really pulled you into pursuing this field? It was my life changing experience I had in '94 with my dad's death, and then the haunting that happened soon after his death. Yeah, that got me intrigued and in, uh, wanting to learn more about the afterlife and what you know happens with the paranormal. Right. The the nice thing about it is it's not because, and there's nothing wrong with seeing a TV show and wanting to get into it that mm-hmm. way. But I, I think one of the things is the parallels uh, with Stacy and I, because, you know, it, it was an actual experience that happened to us that made us get into it in 97. The, we talked back and forth on Facebook a little bit and years ago, and I'm not sure we brought this up, but when you were in the military, you actually had an experience that was intriguing to me. About, and we'll, we'll get into the real depth of this conversation about what's mm-hmm. been happening in, in your home. But uh, one that's right. really intriguing to me is um, uh, the one that happened in South Carolina at, um, I believe, at Shaw Correct. Yeah. Air, Air Force Base. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Um, it was around Thanksgiving, and it was you know cold winter fall there. And I was working the main gate on night shift. And the gate door... It was an older gate at the time. It didn't completely seal. So it was windy that night. On and off, it kept on getting pushed open by the wind. And as the night went on, uh, the traffic had died off, and I had taken my desk and aimed it towards the, the face of the inbound traffic, and I was drawing in my sketchbook. And I felt 
this cool breeze hit me in the back and I thought the door had popped open again. So I looked up and there in the window in front of me was a man standing in a, a, a vintage uniform, a khaki colored air, uh, air force uniform. And I started talking. I said, are you okay? Can I help me? You know, can I help you there? And I slowly reaching for my pistol. And as I turned around, nobody was standing there behind me. And I looked back at the window thinking, well, maybe he was outside and nobody was there in front of the window. Wow. And, yeah. So I got up and ran outside and looked around the gate, couldn't find anyone, uh, called the law enforcement desk to uh, ask if where the patrols were. I thought maybe someone was playing a joke or someone was around there and nobody was around in the area. Play chief had heard the desk sergeant talking to me and he says, tell him I'm coming down there to check on us. So I'm like, oh, great. He's going to think I'm nuts. And he came down there and asked what had happened. And I explained and shared my experience. And he had said years ago when he was first stationed there, he had had the same experience. Mm. And years later, on MySpace, back in the days when there was MySpace, there was an Air Force group I belonged to and we were sharing ghost stories. And there were several other veterans that also had the same experience. And the history is there was a gate not far from that gate they had removed. It was closer to the flight line. And in the, I think it was the early 60s, it happened, was uh, a fighter jet had lost control and the pilot ejected. And the plane went into the gate and killed the gate guard. So, and so a lot of people believe, you know, it was the gate guard that, you know, haunts up there. So I was very intrigued, as I said, about this story. When I first read the story, uh, you had shared a link to those discussion threads. And it was it was very intriguing to me. So I did a little digging to try to find something about the uh, about the plane crash. And, and now I did find a, a plane crash that was very bizarre. So maybe it's not as bizarre as it seems. Uh, you would know better than I. But in at Shaw uh, Air Force Base in July of 1960, there was two RF 101 jets that mm -hmm. took off at 3:46 a.m. And it said that it was on a night refueling mission. And as soon as their landing gears went up, they supposedly both went down harshly to the ground. And at the time, there was a farmhouse there. And uh, one of the jets kind of, I guess, I don't know, skidded or something bounced. And uh, it killed an elderly couple in the farmhouse. It, it was um, They were in their 80s. Uh, it was like Mr. and Mrs. J.E. Davis Sr. But also, it killed... The two pilots of the RF 101s or the F 101s, it was like a Lieutenant Roger uh, Siegel, 27 of Brooklyn, and a Captain Clarence Topke, 30 years old of Franklin Park, Illinois. They have, there was no witnesses to the crash, and uh, they really don't have a reason that this happened to this date. Wow. So I thought maybe you would find that interesting. Yeah, because there's another accident when I was stationed there in the 80s. I think it was uh, 89, it might have been early 90s that uh, we had an F-16, he was coming back from target practice, and he lost control of the F-16 and had to eject, and it crashed near a housing area. And wow. the fuel, when the, the F-16 hit the ground, it hit in this uh, cornfield, and it bounced, and it broke off the fuel pod, and the fuel pod hit the house almost like napalm. Yeah. And the family was having a reunion in the backyard. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Yeah, oh. the grandfather, he um, was covered by the fuel, and he had like 80% oh. burns or something like that on his body, and he died within a couple of days later. And oh. I remember I was on the crash response team when we got there. There was, you know, livestock dead, and we saw chickens running around, uh, you know, with no feathers on fire and smoking and stuff like that. And uh, so that's interesting that there was one in the 60s, almost, you know, almost the same scenario. It really is. It's... Um, it's, that's almost creepy that it's, it's so close yeah. to the same scenario and wow. So, I mean, I thought it was weird that they were just on takeoff like that. And, um, cause if I'm not mistaken, that's, you know, that was some pretty good jets for the time period for 1960. I don't know. That's, that's really intriguing. Maybe that's another story for another time or maybe it was meant for us to talk about it. Who knows? Right. Yeah. That's it's just interesting because they're so close to the base. I wonder where those, how far those two that went down in the housing area, because uh, across from the base, it used to be kind of rural, you know, and that's what that neighborhood was. People had small livestock in their backyards and stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's I mean, honestly, that is very intriguing. Mm -hmm. It's weird that that caught my fancy anyway. 
you know, out of everything we talked about, uh, that really kind of got me yeah. and, and wanted to talk about it. So yeah, th- that, and uh, besides that, and the fact that every other veteran from all these air force bases had such uh, crazy experiences, <laughs> especially the one in Wyoming, that was, that was pretty crazy. All right. So one of the big things I wanted to talk to you about since I've known you, well, know, known you through the interview and known you through social media and, and everything, the way the world is now, you have kept up with a haunting, your haunting. And, you know, it's, and, and I say that, but not really in that much of a negative light. Right. You know, you've, you've really explored and you've done what a lot of people never do. And you've investigated within your own home of, of these hauntings that have been happening. I will tell you that that I've kept up with it for years, but uh, you know I would almost like to go back to to the beginning on that. But I will say something more recent that I was very much moved by was an Echovox session that uh, you guys had posted from uh, January twenty eighth of two thousand seventeen, right? And the female voice, and we're gonna we're gonna post this video on paranormalsideshow.com. dot com. Mm-hmm you know, for people to see, but some of the things that were said honestly freaked me out. Um, and, and, and it was just, it was troubling to hear, um, you know, one of the things said, you know, we serve, uh, Mike and, um, Monique, I believe it said, mm-hmm. and, um, yeah. you know, and then, uh, please help us over and over. This lady was saying, please help us. And she couldn't see her body. Mm-hmm. Right. She was talking about there being three spirits there. And she said, I love hearing myself. It was very, it was very trouble. Was was it troubling like that to you too? I mean, yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, why, why is she stuck here? Right. And what I could tell you, you know, how this all started here at the house and why I investigated the house. I moved in this house in 2005, and I wasn't even into paranormal research at the time. I didn't want to deal with ghosts after dealing with the extreme haunting I had in Florida. Right. And um, we bought the house. And the second day, we hadn't even had furniture in the house. We were just starting to bring stuff in. And I got a six-foot folding table, and I set it up in my office. Is down in the basement. I have a finished basement. And um, I was sitting on my computer, and I just got my computer on. And I thought my wife, Monique, was bringing down a glass of water for me. And I see coming down the stairs this woman dressed in white. And her hair is up in the bun. And I froze because I realized it wasn't my wife. And she come down the stairs and she was just gliding. There was no sound of her coming down. And she stopped at the bottom of the stairs and she was probably less than five or six feet from me and looked right at me and smiled. And I was speechless. And she just turned and continued across the room and went right to the wall and vanished. And I yelled out to my wife, I'm like, holy crap, we just moved in a haunted house, you know? Right. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> and I didn't want to deal with another haunting, especially like I had in Florida. Right. That's, and, uh, uh, that, I mean, that's a <laughs> hell of an experience right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. It was like day two. I was like, wow. And when we moved here, my daughter was three at the time. And she started uh, seeing a little boy out in the front yard playing. And she kept on asking to go outside to go play with him. Well, every time I went to the door to look outside, there was nobody out there. So I started going over to the neighbors and asking who's got the kid. And the neighbors were like, there is no kid. There's a little grandkid? Or, and they were puzzled. They're like, no, you're the first family in a while that's had kids on the street. We're actually excited you guys moving here to hear children playing in the yard again. And uh, so, yeah, so I'm like, all right, my daughter's got an active imagination. Well, it's time went on she started uh, you could hear her in her bedroom playing and she's talking and we're like well who are you talking to and she's like i'm talking to joe well at the time blues clues was a tv show on and the character's name was joe mm-hmm. so we thought she was playing you know with her imaginary friend was named joe right and since she let she loved blues clues and she always got excited when he came on and joe would talk and so as time went on, she would go, oh, there's Joe. And I go, where's Joe? And she goes, oh, he's sitting on the stairs. And my wife and I would look and go, there's nobody there. She goes, oh, he's there. He just waved at us. And she would wave at him. And I'm like, okay. And uh, as time went on one night, um, I got allergies. Um, we have cats, but if they're, I don't want them on my bed due to the hair and that to mess with my breathing. Oh, I understand. So, <laughs> so I woke up feeling someone down by my feet, and I thought it was the cat. 
And um, I go to my wife. I said, hey, get the cat off the bed. And she sat up and gasped because I felt it come off the bed and hit the floor. And, you know, you're like this, like, bump on the floor. And then you could actually hear someone walking across the floor at the end of the bed. And she's gasped, you know, and speechless. And I said, are you okay? What's going on? And you get the cat off the bed? And she goes, it wasn't a cat. It was a little boy. Mm. And I'm like, what? And she goes, yeah, he was sitting at the end of the bed. He looked right at me, jumped off, walked across the foot of it. And before he could make it to the other end of the foot of the bed, he had vanished. So I was like, okay. Wow. And then it's not, yeah. And then about a month later, I was down in my office and I came upstairs and um, the basement door faces my kitchen table. So when I opened the door, there at the kitchen table is this little boy in a red flannel shirt sitting there and he looked right at me and smiled and vanished oh and uh yeah so in 2006 i joined a paranormal research team we got into i started getting into itc research in uh about 2007 2008 with spirit boxes with uh, frank something they got me into it mm-hmm. and uh my wife got it in the mail and she called me at work and says hey i'm testing out the spirit box i said i got this name joe coming through multiple times so i I was like, all right, I'm skeptical. So I came home and started asking questions, and sure enough, the name Joe came to right. several times. And every time I asked, I go, what's your name? And they go, Joe. And when we asked for a full name, it would say Joseph Sunshine. So I did some research in the early 1900s, between 1900 and 1920s. Um, there was three young boys, age anywhere from like 6 to 12 area, that uh, um, had passed away, and their names were Joseph Sunshine. <laughs> So, oh wow. wow, that's an unusual name yeah. too. So yeah, and I've tried to link it to the property. I, I, you know, I belong. I worked with the historical society here in town, and mm-hmm. gone to the library, and I worked at the local museum, and no one can tell me any history of the property. The only person I was able to find was a police officer, and he had said when he was a kid, the, that whole land area where my neighborhood is was vacant except an old farmhouse, and they tore that down when they built the neighborhood. Right. And but no one can give me a name. So Wait. I don't know if he's connected you know, to the property. And as time went on I saw a, a man in uh denim coveralls, scruffy beard. He's been in my yard several times. He usually shows up when I'm burning leaves in the yard. And I always it, when it, he always catches me off guard because I always think it's a neighbor coming over to complain about the smoke. And right. I, and I'll go, Hey, what's up? and take my eye off him for a second, look back and he's gone. Mm. And, uh, my, and my kids have seen him too. So my whole entire family has seen, the only, the only one my wife hasn't seen is, the, is that particular man, but she's seen another man in the bedroom with a full, like, uh, I would say like a duster jacket, like a cowboy jacket. With, and the guy actually has a cowboy hat with a scruffy beard. She's seen him. She was laying in bed and she looked at her bedroom mirror and he was on the opposite side of the room. She could see his reflection in the mirror. And he walked on the side of the room and, gave her like a quick look and just continued walking. Wow. So they're conscious of everything. It's uh, yeah. very interesting because, I mean, as long as I've done this, I have come to the conclusion that it doesn't have to be connected to the land. Right. You know, it seems like the, the spirits will find uh, vacant houses. So if it, right. I don't know how long the house had been vacant. It had been vacant for two years when we bought it. And we had bought it from a couple that bought it from... Um, an estate. The, it was, the original owner was an older lady. The house not that old. It was built in '84, and um, she had uh, passed away. She had had a, a stroke and then died later in the nursing home. And this couple bought the house and they totally remodeled it. Right. And uh, and then they flipped it and we bought it. And uh, so they never lived in the house. It was vacant for two years. They had it for sale for almost two years. Well, yeah, I mean, it just seems like that's happened to me a lot where um, a, a building or, or a house or, mm-hmm. you know, a theater, something's been vacant. And it's almost like like they move in, almost like, like human, almost like humans do, you know, homeless people. Right. Um, you know, it, it's just a, a, a theory that I've worked on because... A lot of times I'll, I'll contact people that have nothing to do. They might be in the general area. Right. But maybe not, you know, really part of that house. That's some amazing stuff. So I guess, uh, when did you really start chronicling it? Um, probably, probably around 2008 when I started my own team. I started. And then in around 2009, I started doing uh, 
sessions with my team here saying, look, I want some answers because the activity's starting to pick up and uh, figure out who it is. My kids, they're, they're not scared of it, which is great. Because my daughter, she, there was one time when she was real little, she walked into the main bathroom and saw a woman in there, and, and it scared her, and she came running out. And there was one time she was using the restroom, and an arm came out of the wall reaching towards her, and that gave her a scare. But other than that, when they see him in the bedrooms, they you know tell him, hey, hi, do you want to talk to my dad? He's downstairs, or you know, <laughs> we can't talk right now. I love but how you're we, nonchalant about it. Yeah. Yeah, we've grown to used to them, you know, and there's times where they bother me, woken me up, and I said, look, you know, I am I need my rest, you know, I'll talk to you later, I can't talk to you right now, and so, I've had that happen, but so the funny. great thing is I've had company come over to my house, and they've witnessed it, Right. so Validation. I know I'm not crazy, mm-hmm. and a couple of years ago, I invited two paranormal teams, for we had like a a, a Christmas get together with a potluck dinner, and then I let them investigate the house for several hours, and they were blown away. Wow! You know they experienced stuff, and I've had I I let my new team members. I'll usually do a session here to let them get the experience, and if they freak out here, I don't want them to go to a client's house. So, right, absolutely. What a good yeah. idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, I had one of my team members. She's a recording artist in Nashville. And her first session ever, we're up in my daughter's room. And I said, well, if anybody's downstairs, we're upstairs. Feel free to come up and talk to us. And all of a sudden, she hears, like, a kid running up the stairs. <laughs> and she's like, who's, who's running up the stairs? And the natural EMF tri field started pegging, and the motion lights came on. And I said, you go look. You're, you're new. I know what it is. You go look. <laughs> 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 That's great. She was scared to go look, but as soon as I walked towards the stairs, you could hear him running back down the stairs, full speed. So I'm just like a kid going down the stairs. Yeah, and, that's amazing. I, you yeah. know, I'm 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 really into the uh, ITC as well. Probably got into it around the same time you did. You know, I remember using the Frank's box and the shack hack and all that good stuff. You know, it, people go either way on it, so it really excites me that you're yeah. into it because uh, we had uh, who is it. Uh, was it? I don't want to get his name wrong, but Richard Hobart Edwards is that um, uh, speak- Ma- Michael. Michael Michael Edwards. Edwards. Sorry, Michael, the Speaking to the Dead with Radios uh, yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, I love the ITC research, and for me, it's the absolute best thing in the world for communication in real time because right. you know one of our big problems is we go into these places and we may ask for something. And we're talking to the wrong person, so we're not getting what we need to get. We're not helping what we need to help. So personally, I love uh, the sweeps. And and honestly, I, I talked about this with somebody else on the show one time, but when I'm doing the sweep technology, a lot of times I'll hear something like another layer. It's almost like a, like a hidden layer underneath yep. the layer. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. See, the, the other guy that I talked to about it also knew what I was talking about. And for people that aren't really into it, that just listen to it rarely, because mm-hmm. um, we record every session with the recorder. And right. when I go back, I seem to find so much, but I also hear this other, it's almost like you've, you're, you're breaking through the veil <laughs> and there's this open line of communication on the other side. But uh, it's, it's what I was getting at with the sweep technology, you know, also I noticed you using the, uh, the Echo Vox uh, app. It seemed like you were getting some incredible evidence with that is that does that work that way for you every time um lately we've been very successful it's like almost every session there's times where i've turned it on i haven't even started asking questions and you hear these voices going they're ready to talk they're here to talk you know yeah and they're almost like arguing to who's going to talk first and i had seen a, a video online of someone using the echo box and i and i was kind of skeptical because it's you know phone app you know like ah, i don't know about that right mm-hmm. and i said but hey let's let's give it a shot so i introduced it to my team and my co-director beth lunsford she connected with it really good and she's mastered so well that she's uh daniel ropard who, who invented the app he declared her the only expert on it and there's times he sends us uh apps to test out to see, you know, how they come out. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> we sent him one recording and said, what do you think of this one? And he was just blown away. He's like, he goes, that's insane. He goes, all right, thank you. I'm putting it on the market. <laughs> yeah. so it was just that amazing. And I said, yeah, how do you explain these intelligent responses when I'm holding, 
I use like photographs of people that I know that I believe that I've contacted prior. So I started getting photographs of them of different time periods of their, their life and go, who's this? And it would say their name. First and last name would come across the echo box. I'm like, how do you explain that? I'm not even saying his name. I'm just saying, who's this? And pointing to the photo. Mm-hmm. That is and, amazing. Yeah. So it, that made me a big time believer. And especially when I'm like, can you tell me my name? And also in clear today, the echo box goes, Mike. And, and, and it's, um, one of the things that blew me away was one of my team members um, had left the team and uh, lived on the other side of Nashville. And she contacted Beth and says, Beth, I just did this echo box session and they're asking for you and Mike. And she's like, what? So she goes, here, I'll send you the recording. So Beth contacted me like in the middle of the night, almost like midnight. She contacts me, she says, Mike, you gotta go listen to this file, go download it, go listen to it. And immediately on the recording, it asked this lady goes, is there any spirits here that want to talk to me? And the reply was, where's Mike Sears and Beth Lunsford? And I'm like, holy crap. I said, that lady lives 50 miles away from me. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I mean, how does this, yeah, how does that come through the echo box? So I'm a huge believer of, you know, that working. And we've had, like I said, from different locations, we've used it where replies are coming through that matches to the history. And at my house, we've gotten, you know, the same names that come through. And sometimes new ones, I think they word gets out saying, hey, Mike can talk, you know. Yeah, it's, it, it reminds me of that scene in Ghost. Yeah. You know, where they're all lining up to talk. So basically, I mean, I'm going to call a spade a spade. You, you're you're obviously sensitive to the paranormal, or you wouldn't see spirits in the first place. Mm-hmm. And you're open to it, which is a beautiful thing that your whole family is open to it. So it speaks to my heart because that's how our house is. You know, everybody, our kids, everybody is completely not scared of it. They're open to it. You know, just last night, funny uh, comparison here. Um, I was trying to go to sleep and I needed to go to sleep and I had just laid down and I get these two giant, I mean, giant bangs right beside me on the wall. I asked Stacy about it and she's, and Stacy is the rational one of the two of us. And she was like, well, maybe something fell on the roof. And uh, then it, it banged again. Like as soon as I said that it banged again, wow. just, like just to say, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that, and that stuff, and it's funny because we talk about this in private, but so much weird stuff happens that would normally send people off with their, their arms in the air flailing uh, right. to the loony right. bin. Right. But when it happens to you day after day after day, you just learn to accept it. And I think that the spirits know, as you said, that, hey, I can go to Mike and, mm-hmm. and possibly get a chance to talk and someone who really listens. It's really incredible, man. And, and I'll, I'll have to put it over again. Anybody who hasn't uh, seen this video... Mm-hmm. I, you know, I am ordering you to, to go to either Mike's page or, uh, find Ma- Mike on Facebook, go to parent. We'll, we'll link him on paranormal sideshow, uh, dot com, but you have to go and check out some of these sessions. They're just amazing, especially with, and I don't believe that the new echo Vox that they're using actually has a phonetic generator. Is that correct? No, no, it's, it's all scrambled up noises. And then you have the echo Vox R which you can record your own soundtrack. You can read a poem, you can just mumble a bunch of noises or alphabet, and it takes all those noises and scrambles it up backwards, forwards, and, and that's your sound bank. Right. And that we, we, Daniel gave that to uh, Beth for us to try out, and he was blown away what we got through. I have a, I'm working on editing right now because I had bought a Halloween decoration I had bought, at on clearance, and I brought it in the house, and it upset the spirits big time. I tried to scare my son with it. He was sleeping, so I put it at the end of the couch where he was sleeping on, and I thought he'd wake up and see it. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, the ceiling fan in that room, the pole chains on it just started swinging super hard, and we're hitting the glass globes, and, and I said, Wow. I, I said, I don't think the fan's unbalanced, and I studied it and stopped them, and everything was perfect, and then they just started right up again. And so I took the decoration down, and it just kept it up for hours. And we had had the fans with the pull strings before in the house. We had one time all three fans doing it. And uh, 
But that day it was really intense. So I go to my wife. I said, let's do an Echo Box session. And I got some amazing replies. And I'm, I'm working on the video for that and hopefully have it up before the end of the month. <laughs> Did they tell um, you that they were I, upset that you were trying to scare your son? <laughs> they're saying they were upset. I asked them, are they hitting the fan? They, they, it clear as day. You hear them say, hit Shane, you know, hard and click. And wow. it, it was just amazing. I played it for my mom, and she was just blown away. She was just like, I can't believe how clear as day these responses are coming in. And I said, yeah, that backs up the chain on the fan. And there was one time throughout the night that the fan was going crazy. And finally, I, I put my foot down. I yelled. I said, look. We got it. I put away the decoration. I apologize if we offended you, but you need to stop with the fan. And it stopped right after that. Wow. But, but one of the things that blew me away that night, they were swinging and playing, and my daughter's like, oh, they're back at it with the fan. And I said, yeah, just ignore it. And several times she got up and stopped him, and then it would start up again, swinging back and forth. But one time she gasped and she goes, Dad, look. And I go, holy crap, I wish I had it on video. The chains totally twisted together all the way to the top where they could go nice. and just hung there for a few, you know, several seconds. And I said, no way. And then it totally unspun. That's I've, I've seen it where I said, stop it and see the pendulum hold the midair and freeze. And then like someone's grabbed it by their hand and then let go of it and start swinging again. So it, that's, um, I mean, that that's some extreme. That's what I'm talking about. That's yeah. very extreme, you know, and I, I love what's happening. I mean, some of the things that you've had happen to you, Mike, be, yep. Being able to put the pictures. Video, oh. the, the video of the, the shadow mass in my hallway, I don't know if you've seen that one I posted several years ago, where I was constantly seeing shadow figures going up and down the hallway, and I said, that's it, I'm getting the video camera out. And sure enough, you see this big mass appear on the wall, and it looks like two figures. It's cool that and you could you, catch that on video, because a lot of times, by the time you get out the video equipment, everything right. just kind of stops. <laughs> well... We had a spirit from another location we investigated that was constantly coming to me. And I was having visions. I would, you know, black out and see these visions of her being murdered and where her body is located and that from this prior property. And she, we started getting disembodied voices in the house of her yelling out, hello, talk to me. And I, I found some of that. You know, we had a, I saw about the size of a football ball of light floating across the house that was during that time period she was constantly waking me up so my wife jokes she goes i feel like i'm sleeping in a science lab because i had multiple video cameras in our bedroom and sound recorders and motion lights <laughs> filming us while we sleep you know and the next day i review it and i'm like look at this i said there's an orb flying above you and all the motion lights in the bedroom are turning on and i said how do you explain you know this stuff so i said i know i'm not crazy especially when i had her voice on you know, the recorder talking about, you know, waking me up on mic, waking me up. And the funny thing is, several times when I've been woken up, I think the female spirit that resides here, which I think is the older lady that originally owned the house. Right. Mm -hmm. She she gets upset when there's too much traffic in here. And we have her yelling, get out. And I, and you know, my wife was like, oh, that doesn't sound good. And I said, I think it's her telling the other spirits to get out. You know, to leave her, you know, leave the house alone and let us, you know, get some sleep. I didn't take it as anything, you know, negative. She's gotten some captures when she was going to college for her RN nurse a few years ago. Um, she was taking notes on um, about insulin. Right. And, and, and the old lady, she, she was diabetic and, and, and she had a stroke. And all of a sudden you hear that she was blown away. She was recording it on her phone, her notes, and then she drove to school and she's listening to a recording in the car. And she's like, oh, my God, who, who's that? She was. I was asleep and the kids had gone to school, so she was the only one awake and talking in the house. But clear as day here is this old woman when she's talking about what insulin can, if you don't get the insulin for the diabetic thing, and uh, it, you hear this one go, a stroke. And it sounds like an old lady, and it's class A EVP, and then suddenly you hear this man goes, it killed her. Wow. And Yeah. And <laughs> That's we, crazy. We, we, yeah, so I... I I think that, you know, they, they definitely can see us because we've actually, you know, held up how many fingers can you see. And I wish my team member had some great video on it. We were just testing out the connect on that January 28th investigation. Right. And on the echo box, that woman that you're talking about on the video, there's a part during that session where she says she can see me. Yes. And we asked, well, where are you at? And she goes, in front of, in, in front of you. And so I had told Stan and my team, I said, hey, take the connect and aim it at me. And sure enough, right in front of me is a stick figure. Right. So that, that's another great thing, you know, backing up the ITC to have that, you know. Absolutely. To. Being able to back it up is great. I also seen the um, the worm 
capture on the Connect. Yeah. I had never seen anything like that, and I've, I've shared it with other researchers going, what do you think of this? And they go, I don't know. I said, when I first saw it, I thought maybe it was a piece of lint floating in front of the lens. But I go, it's not. It's It's got its own path and direction of, you know, where it wants to go, and it goes behind my fish tank, which is that big black blob you see on the video. Right. No, I I, so I, I love it. I've had some success with the 3D mapping as well. You know, it, it, it seems to really work and it seems to, I love when it corresponds with the audio, as, as you're saying, anytime that you can have a metaphysical experience and be able to back that up, um, you know, with, right. with the hard evidence is, is the, is the best way, but the sheer amount of evidence and the sheer amount of work that you've done, you know, I don't, I don't know if you ever really pause to think about it, but you know, I am super impressed with the evidence that you have, just the hard evidence and, mm-hmm. You know, people are always, uh, skeptics are always talking, you know, well, show me the uh, the solid proof. And, it, and nothing frustrates right. me any more than that. Well, it's frustrating because even when you show them stuff that is proof, they don't, they claim it's not proof. Right. So, right. so you know, the, the very fact that the work you're doing there, I, I think it's great because just the the way you don't look at it as a negative and you don't right. you don't look at it as a negative haunting. I, I would say the spirits appreciate that as well. Yeah. But you know, the the questions still remain. It's almost like when you get this evidence, it, it creates more questions because the girl we were speaking of on the Echo Vox, she was talking about not being able to see her body. And right. you know, I, I could distinctly hear her saying, you know, I, I can't see my hands or, or mm-hmm. you know, why can't I? Uh, but she could see you perfectly. But then you got to look at the fact that they project themselves to us in, in, in pretty much in the form that they that they most want. Like their construct is maybe them at 25 years old or, you know, sometimes it's the old lady is the old lady. I get that. Or the little boy is the little boy. But still yet being able to, you know, what makes them different? What makes the what makes the one being able to project, which you would imagine they could they'd be able to see that if they were able to do that. And what makes the one that sounded terrified Mm -hmm. that she couldn't see herself. That was what was troubling about it was she just seemed terrified. Well, that and her asking to come back, like she just kept saying, I want out, get me out of here. Yeah. Yeah. It's not my time. It's not my time. We had the front door slam wide open. Mm -hmm. And I think that's in the video clip too. You hear the loud wham and everybody's like, what is that? And I said, I think that's the front door. And I went and sure enough, our storm door had swung open. And it was latch closed. And I went outside, found it wide open, and there wasn't even a gentle breeze. It was dead air outside. So I was like, how the hell did that door just swing open? Wow. Yeah. And, and if, you, if you've not thought of this yet, I, I would sincerely want you to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually working on that. And, I mean, everybody's been on it for years. And I've been trying to. A few years ago, I started it, and I had it on my laptop, and I didn't save a backup. And when my laptop got in the Jan uh, last December's investigation, mm-hmm. I lost it. So I started all new again. I'm working on it, but I was hoping to have it done by this summer. But I don't see it getting done by this summer. Yeah, well, I mean, it, I know how it goes. It, it, once again, can I can I point out another parallel? <laughs> um, I'll let Stacy point this one out. Uh, yeah. So John's been working on a book for a long time. And we were really close to having it finished on his old computer that has crashed now and cannot be recovered. So he had to start over from scratch, but he's about done. Yeah. He's about yeah, done. Yeah, I'm saving now on the computer and on a memory stick, so I got two copies of it. Yeah. There you go. The way they uh the way they turn stuff off with you, you know, that's uh, you never know what what'll happen to it. It'll, it'll all be whopped out or <laughs> exactly. exactly. But yeah, it's a very intriguing story and, and like I said, the, the whole point that uh, you have put it out there. You've been really vulnerable with it, with the experiences, and 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 that really pushes the field forward with with some of the work that you've done. And you know that's why I want to. That's why I want it to in 2011. That's why I want to now. You know, really promote that mm-hmm. and, and and push that out there. I think you and your team, uh, you and Beth and and your team have really done great work. You know, for the field. So let me ask you, what's been the most I don't know. You, you've had you've had some really good experiences. What's been what's been the most harrow, harrowing experience of your paranormal career? Uh, out of all my investigating. Oh yeah. Um, um, it was probably when I first started the team I belonged with at the time. We got to investigate an old elementary school that was built 
in the early 1900s in Nashville. And I got to investigate there over a dozen times. And a medium had picked up a name, and it matched with a, a gentleman that was a custodial there that was brought up on charges for uh, misconduct with children. Ooh. And he was prosecuted and hung. Oh, goodness. And he did not like women in that school when we investigated. Female investigators were always grabbed and touched in vulnerable areas. And um, we were doing a session in the area where he normally resides at. And one of the team leader goes, Mike, you just disappeared. There's just, you, it's just totally black all around you. I can't see you sitting in the chair. And I said, yeah, I'm like tingling from head to toe. And then I go, wow, my left ear is getting super, super hot. And the medium goes, I think you're being attacked. You need to leave. So I got up to go walk out of the room and I got halfway out of the chair and I felt this big paw of a hand grab me on the shoulder and shove me back into the chair. And she's like, you need to go. I said, I'm trying to. I just got pushed back into the chair. And as I was leaving the room, they said they saw like a ball of light follow me. And when I got outside, my left ear was just super beat, beat red, like mm. it had been burnt. And the next day, my ear peeled like a sunburn. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that was probably the most intense I've ever had, um, except uh, there was a case. It wasn't like it was frightening. I fought all through it and kept on asking questions through it, <laughs> is I think a spirit tried to enter me to communicate, and that, that scared me. Um, all of a sudden, I was we had gone to a walkthrough at this private residence, and I had gotten three different spirits. So I went back there with the medium, and I started asking questions. I said, all right, who's this, and then who's this? And the, the house I was working at was a, a, a veteran, uh, Afghanistan War uh, and Iraq War veteran. And um, a name that came through matched to one of his friends that was killed. Mm. And so I started asking, you know, is this, you know, who's this person? And wanted to see if there was actually him, you know, connecting. And all of a sudden I said, wow, who's sad? And it just hit me so hard. I just started crying so hard. Mm -hmm. I was fighting it. It felt like I had just witnessed my, my wife and kids hit by a car or something. Wow. That's how intense it was. Yeah. And and as soon as I said, it, it just like left me. It was like someone hit a light switch. It just was gone. Right. And I said, wow, you know, I don't know what that was, but I need to go outside and get some fresh air. That was intense. Yeah. And uh, so it, w it wasn't like frightening, frightening, but it was probably one of the most intense moments I had yeah. while investigating. I mean, the, the empathic things and obviously, you know, being in this field uh, for, for a while, some of us are lights, you know, it, I'm, I was hesitant to say the sensitive thing for a long time just because of the stigma attached to that. But obviously, like I said a while ago, you, you're you're very sensitive to the paranormal, if not more than that. Yeah. You know, but but I, I firmly believe that some of us are lights uh, for whatever reason, our souls burning bright and it's very easy for the other side to see us. And, right. you know, some of that comes from doing it continuously. You know, if you go play baseball every day, you're going to be a really good baseball player, at least better than you were. Right. But, you know, I think some of us are naturally that way. You seem to be a bright light for the other side to see. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know if you agree with that or not, but it's uh, it just, you know, from outside looking in, that's what it feels like. Well, I got several psychic friends. They always tell me I'm a psychic in denial. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, it, that totally sounds like that. I mean, it's you've got some really good things uh, going on, and some of the best psychics that I've worked with work primarily with recorders because they're uh, well, not insecure, but I don't know if they just don't trust their feelings as much or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but to get that backup, that validation, the, the scientist in right. them requires that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you, you definitely got that base covered with uh, backing up your experiences with, you know, true equipment. So uh, what, what, what is your favorite piece of equipment it, uh, now that we're talking about it to geek out a little bit? Probably, probably the digital recorder. And for that main reason is to back up, you know, what I'm feeling or seeing or hearing. Um, my team, I always tag it out loud um, when I do sessions. I always say possible voice. Right. And <laughs> most of the time it is a voice. The team will yeah. go, yep, I got an EVP there. Mike was right. You know, I got mm -hmm. this reply. You know? Yeah, John does that. Oh, sometimes he'll just say that he heard something, and sometimes he'll say, I think I heard, and he'll say what he thinks he heard, so that when you right. go back and listen to it, you can match it up. 
We're kindred spirits, right. buddy. <laughs> kindred spirits. Um, it, it's become a joke, um, you know, with teams over the years. If you want something to happen, go with John. So I, I, I feel, <laughs> I feel that it's the same way uh, w- with you. But I, I just want to say, you know, I really appreciate you coming on the show and and sharing some of your experiences with us, mm-hmm. scaring our audience a little bit. But it, I, I, I can't put it out there enough. You have to write that book. You have to finish that book for everyone. (laughs) But, you know, other than that, I I implore everyone to go to VSParanormal.com. Go find Mike, uh, his page on on, on Facebook. Uh, Go find the team's page. They do some really amazing work. And you don't have to be, you know, on TV every week to to be one of the best paranormal teams out there. That's right. And I'll put links up for everything. And I'll link to that video, especially we've been talking about. Yeah, I'll give you um, best page two, Music City Ghost. She has a lot of videos of sessions that are done at my house. Okay. She has probably the most videos that, you know, are from my location. Okay, yeah. And I do visit that page. So, um uh, so that's best page. Okay, we'll we'll get them both up, and uh, we'll get links to everything. Uh, again, my friend, thank you very much, and uh, I hope to have you back on the show uh, after you finish the yeah, book. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, have a good night. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having me on. Bye. All right. Well, that was as amazing as I thought it would be. Yes, always interesting. He's always full of interesting stories. You know, going back to our days, we've mm-hmm. been doing this a long time. Mm-hmm. Going back seven years of doing the podcast, right? One of my favorite things is always bringing on people, real yes. real people. Um, As yeah. opposed to fake people. Yeah. The fake people, <laughs> they don't say much. They smell no. like plastic. <laughs> you know, um, I, I like bringing on the team next door. Right. Uh, so to speak. And mm-hmm. they, he's done such good research from his freaking home. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it, it, to me, that furthers the field. Yes. If anything ever has things like that, and, and I'm such a proponent of sweep technology, um, so so we know that I'm always going to be biased to that, right? Just, right. Just because, and it, and those guys always hear that underlying thing that I hear, right? I think you have to really listen to it a lot, yeah, to be able to hear that, yeah, and you have to be careful because yeah, absolutely, I got to a point where I was listening to it too much. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had, I've had i had an angry spirit. I had it for years. Mm-hmm. And this this dude, and he was just a dude, mm-hmm. he would yell and cuss at me. It didn't matter what location we were at. Mm-hmm. And he would, uh, I mean, I lost him a couple of houses ago. And I'm hoping he's still trying to find his way out of that place. <laughs> but, I mean, seriously, every time I would play it, and I would never play it for you guys. I would never, right. never play it for the family. But every time I did uh, something with the... Uh, sweep technology Mm -hmm. i would always hear this guy and he was always just cussing i mean he was always going off on me he couldn't stand me i could only imagine he was an old boyfriend or something of (laughs) of yours not of mine my old boyfriends don't really bother (laughs) me you're good terms right pretty good good. you know it's a mutual understanding um (laughs) but you know those military guys uh mike sears once again vsparanormal.com we're going to put up links for him and beth Yes, um, on the show page. Yeah, on the show page on ParanormalSideShow.com because um, that's the place to go to find out everything there is about Volunteer State Paranormal. No, <laughs> but, but somewhat. Facebook.com slash Paranormal Sideshow. On the Twitter, it's at Sideshow97. On Instagram, ha damn, it's John and Stacey Edwards. And on YouTube, you just need to search Paranormal Sideshow. For my lovely wife, Stacey, my name's John. So long from the Sideshow. Good night.